हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दिस इज द फोर्थ लेक्चर इन पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस एंड वी आर मूविंग टू वर्ड्स द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ द पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस व्हिच इज गोइंग टू टीच अस हाउ टू डील विद लीनियर पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस व्हिच आर ऑफ ऑर्डर 1 सो फॉर दिस आई विल बी कंसीडरिंग व्हाट इज द लैग्रांजेस इक्वेशन सो लैग्रांजेस इक्वेशन इज The definition is a quasi-linear partial differential equation, which is of order one and of the form p p plus q q equals to r, where my p, q, and capital R they are the functions of x, y, and z. Such a partial differential equation is known as a Lagrange equation. Right now, is there any method to solve the Lagrange equation? Yes, there is a method, and that can be stated through a theorem. So now we are going to discuss the Lagrange method of solving the equation, which is of the form p p plus q q equals to r, where my p q and r are the functions of x y and z. And what is the theorem? The theorem states that the general solution of the Lagrange equation, that is, the, what is the Lagrange equation again? P p plus q q equals to r. Let me mark this as equation number one. Is so the solution of general solution of this equation is nothing but phi of u v equals to zero. Let me mark it as two, where u is where u is again a function of x y and z which is equals to constant c one and v of x y z equals to c two. And let me call this solution both these solution as uh, three. So just I'm marking these equations. So what does it mean? So phi are the arbitrary function and U and V are the two independent solution of this dx upon p is equals to dy upon q is equals to dz upon r. So mark this as equation number four. And here you can observe that c1 and c2 are the arbitrary constants, and at least one of the u comma v must contain the z. Right now, let us prove this theorem. It's a very simple theorem. So since we know that phi of u comma v equals to zero. right so if i differentiate partially with respect to x and y so differentiate partially with respect to x and y so what do we get from here if you partially differentiate it with respect to y, uh, x so you get del phi by del u right and then u is again a function of x y and z so it will go del u by del x so this step i have already described in my previous video lecture so p times del u by del z correct plus del phi by del v right into del v by del x plus p times del v by del z equals to 0 so mark this as equation number 5 and similarly when you differentiate this equation with respect to y what do you get you get del phi by del u right so into del u by del y fine plus q times del u by del z plus del phi by del v into del v by del y plus q times del v by del c equals to 0 so mark this as equation number 6 now our main task is so what do we want to do now we want to eliminate del phi by del u right and del phi by del v between equation 5 and 6 so on doing so what can uh, we do so this this can be compared as a system of linear equations right so you can take the determinant here so it here what will be the coefficient here it would be del u by del x fine with this plus p times del u by del z right and what it will uh, what it will be here it will be del v by del x plus uh, p times del v by del z similarly what you will get here so here you will get del u by del y plus q times del u by del z right and here it would be del v by del y plus q times del v by del z so just take the determinant equals to 0 so on solving this what do you get just cross multiply so this will be del u by del x plus p times del u by del z right multiplied with del v by del y plus q times del v by del z minus del v by del x plus p times del v by del z multiplied with del u by del y plus q times del u by del z equals to 0 fine with this now just bring all the terms which are multiplied with q on one side so let us multiply this step by step and just observe so once you multiply del u by del x with this so what it would be it would be del u by del x right multiplied by 
del v by del y fine plus q times del v by del z multiplied with del u by del x correct now plus p times now p will be multiplied with these two terms right so p into del u by del z into del v by del y fine plus p into q del u by del z correct into del v by del z so this is the these are the four terms which are going to get from the first two terms right and on taking the product of the next two terms what do you get just let me write it here so it would be del v by del x into del u by del y fine plus q times del u by del z right into del v by del x plus p times del v by del z into del u by del y plus p into q times del v by del z into del u by del z so you can clearly observe that both these terms will get cancelled out right now you can just club the terms so club all the terms which are the multiple of p so on taking p common from here so the terms are del u by del z into del v by del y and from here you will get minus del v by del z into del u by del y so now now bring q common so from q you will be get this term so this is del u by del x into del v by del z right and from here it would be minus del u by del z into del v by del x right and uh, the leftover terms can be clubbed together so that will give me del u by del x into del v by del y right minus minus del u by del y into del v by del x equals to zero right now take these terms in the right hand side so what do you get you get p multiplied with del u by del y into del v by del z right minus del u by del z into del v by del y right and plus q times so this would be del u by del z into del v by del x right minus del u by del x plus del uh, sorry into del v by del z so this is a multiple of q and the constant here it was it was del u by del x del v by del y minus del u by del y into del v by del x right and now just mark this as equation number seven now clearly observe that two is a solution of seven so what was my two so my two was this phi of uv equals to zero so yes two is a solution of this equation because we have solved this so since and uh, hence we can say hence two is a solution of equation seven right so now just take the differentials of this so we also know so now taking differentials of u of x comma y comma z equals to c1 and v of x comma y comma z equals to c2 what do we get we get so just take the differential with respect to u first so it would be del u by del x into dx right take the total derivative plus del u by del y into dy plus del u by del z into dz equals to so the derivative of constant is zero on the similar lines when you take the differentials of this v so what do you get del v by del x into dx plus del v by del y into dy plus del v by del z into dz equals to zero so mark this as equation number eight and equation number nine and since we know that since we know u and v are independent functions so they are independent functions so on solving 8 and 9 so right for the ratios and what are the ratios that is a dx dy and dz what do you get so dx upon just see this thing dx upon then it is dy upon and then it is dz upon right so when you take dx so just hide the terms below dx and just cross multiply the rest over term so it will be del u by del y right multiply with del v by del z minus del u by del z my into del v by del y when you write the terms in the denominator of dx what you do just hide these terms and just multiply the 
coefficients of dy and dz and just take the product so here it would be del u by del y multiplied with del v by del z minus del u by del z into del v by del y and a similar approach will be applied in dy and dz so so we get these ratios and already as i have described my number equation number four this u and v they were the independent solution of this equation right of the equation four and now just compare the equation four and this system so let me call this uh, system as equation number 10 right so on comparing on comparing 10 with 4 and what was my fourth equation that was dx upon p is equals to dy upon q is equals to dz upon r so this was my equation number four so just compare them so what do you get from here so you get this term divided by p is equals to this term divided by q is equal to this term divided by r so you get del u by del y into del v by del z minus del u by del z into del v by del y right divided by p capital p this is equals to del u by del z del v by del x minus del u by del x into del v by del z whole divided by q this is equals to del u by del x into del v by del y minus del u by del y into del v by del x this is equals upon r now three ratios are equal so they must be equal to some constant k say right so on comparing it with k what do you get so you get del u by del y del v by del z minus del u by del z multiply with del v by del y is equals to k times p similarly the second term is k times q and the third term will be come out to k times r now what do we do just substitute these values in equation 7 so substitute the above values in equation 7 now what was my equation 7 just observe this thing so my seventh equation was this right now this has come out to be nothing but my k times p similarly this is k times q and this is k times r so what do you i get from here so on substituting the above equation uh, above values in equation 7 we get k will be a constant multiplied with p times p plus q times q is equals to k times right r now k and k will get cancel out so or this is equal to p time p plus q times q equals to r right so which is nothing but my equation 1 which is equation 1 so therefore therefore what is the conclusion so conclusion conclusion is if u that was the function of x y and z is equals to c1 and v which is a, again a function of x y and z which is equals to c2 if they are the two independent right solution of the system of differential equations dx upon p as i have already taken dy upon q is equals to dz upon r so if this condition holds then my phi that is a function of u comma v is zero is the solution which is corresponding to the equation p p plus q q right equals to r right where phi is my arbitrary function so uh, that was the proof for this theorem right and uh, before concluding this video lecture i would like to add a remark here so this equation so which is uh, equation number four this equation these are also known as lagrange's so they are called lagrange's lagrange's auxiliary auxiliary or characteristic equation characteristic equations fine so now i hope you have understood this theorem properly in my upcoming video lectures we will be learning the tool the working rule to solve this lagrange method and we will be solving few questions which are based on lagrange method so i hope you have enjoyed this session for more such videos do subscribe to my youtube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon thank you